Oh. Beautiful. Oh my god. This is outrageous. Is it nice from down there? Oh. I cannot even deal with this. <laughs> Whew. All right. What's up? Day two here at Smith Rock. This is our last day shooting, which is quite sad. I think we've had a good time so far. That's a, maybe possibly. That's a tear in your eye, I think. No, that's that's a little bit of rain. Are you sure out. that's what it is? It's rain, man. Rain, man. I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, actually, it is raining a little bit. We've got some storm clouds rushing over, which is going to be really nice for sunset, and then supposedly it's supposed to clear up for Milky Way, and we're going to go hike up that ridge out there in the distance. We've got a bunch of food, some water. Uh, it should be pretty good. It's a little hot, but at least the storm clouds are keeping the heat away. So we rushed up the ridge. I'm a little tired, a little bit winded, but check out this payoff. It is absolutely spectacular. And I know I say that a lot about a lot of the places that I go, but this is, it's, it's incredible. I'm all, I'm, I'm, I'm at a little bit of a loss for words. And the ridge below me right now makes this really nice curving shape and it's all just getting side lit by this really 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 awesome golden light i'm not going to spend too much time talking into the camera because i really need to shoot some images so man we lucked out <laughs> look at this incredible view no, not that uh, ew, jesus okay there we go look at this incredible view and I'm really hoping that during sunset, these clouds, because they are moving to the right, but I want them right there. So I'm really hoping that they move over in time. You know, it's best too, if you don't have that time, if you don't want to faff about, just take a shot with the polarizer in two different positions and you'll get what you need. That was so good, Gavin. Yeah, you're learning from a master right now. <laughs> All right, so I decided to switch to a 14 millimeter lens to get a little bit more of this foreground in here, and a little bit more of the sky. And I'm even doing a slight panorama to get just a little bit more of the sky. And of course, you're seeing a 16 by nine crop right now. It's actually a, a what is it, three by two crop? All right, so here is my first image from that sunset. Honestly, I was at almost a loss of words. Coming back and trying to process these images, I was almost overwhelmed with how beautiful the light and the colors were, and it actually made it harder for me to process this image, but I ended up going in, doing a lot of dodging and burning, kind of dodging that area around the ridge, burning out areas of the sky and the rocks. This is just a single exposure with the Nikon D850 at 14 millimeters. I'm at f8 and I'm doing a one second exposure for this one. Luckily facing away from the sun enabled me to get enough dynamic range in the shadows and the highlights as to not have to do any exposure blending for this one. All right, so this image was actually taken a little bit earlier than the previous image and it's a panorama made of about six different images. And the reason I did a panorama is because I wanted that wider field of view to really show off the clouds on the right and left side. I also wanted to include a little bit more of the rock wall on the left 
and the right side of the image. I'm using the 16 to 35 for this one and I'm shooting this at 1 80th of a second f8 ISO 800. I wanted to speed up my shutter speed so that I could do a handheld panorama. I was in kind of an uncomfortable spot trying to get this photograph and I didn't want to mess around with the tripod for the panorama. I just felt like it was going to be too difficult and too time consuming so handheld for this one was really the way to go. Here are the raw photographs that went into this panorama. So you can see here, I'm shooting these vertical images and I'm just going left to right. And then I stitch the whole thing using Adobe Lightroom. I enjoy both images for different reasons. I think I might like the single exposure a little bit more. Let me know which one you guys like more in the comments. Well, that was a really spectacular sunset. It was good. <laughs> we have a lot of storm clouds in the sky right now, so 50-50 chance that the sky clears up. If the sky does open up, we're going to take some Milky Way images that we can use for our new night sky photography course, which would be really awesome. And if it stays cloudy, well, that's okay. We got an awesome sunset, did an awesome hike, and it was a great last night for the trip. Outlook is, uh, is uh, you know... Where? Oh my God, I see it. So we're still here on top of the rock. Uh, Milky Way, not quite as good as we thought. Decent amount of clouds in the sky. Moonlight drowned it out for a while and there's actually a decent amount of light pollution. But we actually did get a really beautiful moon set where this really awesome golden light was sweeping in to the composition and lighting up the whole peak um, and the river looked incredible the river was catching all that reflected moonlight well this is definitely one of those unexpected moments we weren't banking on an incredible moon set we were really focused on those stunning sunset colors but i may actually enjoy this moon set shot more than the sunset which is hard to <laughs> kind of describe because the sunset was incredible. But this shot is actually made up of about five different exposures. Let me show you what those exposures were. I've got my brighter exposure. I'm at ISO 1600, 14 millimeters, 2.8, and I'm shooting 131 seconds here. So if I zoom in, I've got a lot of nice detail for that foreground and a little bit of star trail. For this one, I've left all my settings uh, exactly the same except for the shutter speed. So this one's a 20 second exposure. This is where I liked most of the detail, but I needed a little bit more shadow detail from this photograph. And then I've got this darker exposure that's only a four second exposure. And I wanted to do this more for the moonlight and some of the city lights. And then just as a safety, I even did this super dark exposure, only 1.6 seconds to get even more detail in the moon. Now the thing is I really liked what was happening in the clouds here, but I didn't like how they were chopping off in this frame. So I actually aimed the camera upwards to get a little bit more of this really awesome cloud and some of the stars. And then in Photoshop, I'm blending these images together to create my final image. So if you wanna learn how I blended the exposures and created this final product, go ahead and check the link in my description. Uh, yeah, I, I actually think, even though we came here for Milky Way, and we came here because we wanted to tu film a tutorial for the course, uh, we got something totally different. I, I, I thought that moony stuff, that, that moon, that underglow, underglow from the moon on those clouds, it just had an atmosphere to it. Good stuff. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what you got there, actually. With the, uh, with the moon set? Yeah, I think it might, might be almost as good as what I got, but <laughs> probably not. That's good. So after another sleepless night of photographing, unfortunately it was time to head back home. Gavin made his way back up to Vancouver Island and I started making my way down south. I want to thank Gavin Photo Tripper for the laughs and the good times hiking around capturing images. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll be releasing a bunch of new time-lapse videos, vlogs, and tutorials in the future. Catch you guys in the next one.